Alright then, today the 12th of October 2019, we're here in Germany. There's a very special guest standing next to me, Solmaz Vakilpur. First of all, I'm very happy to have you around, Solmaz. Thank you. Uh, I know that you're very active, you're very like a decent artist, and you're like a highly present, I would say like a radical feminist. And the other side, I'm, I'm not really sure how you define yourself, but like most of the activities that you're doing is regarding the women's issues. Um, we had a seminar at the like other room over there. I know, like you had like a sp special talk about like hijab kind of thing. Yeah. The first question would be, yeah. why you think it's important to talk about hijab? So it is very important to talk about hijab. I think because it is something that simple, and mm -hmm. if it's so simple, and we cannot just. Uh, make it away. We can not just stop it. It shows there is a very gigantic big power behind it and I think that the um, Islamic regimes um, and also the Western regimes, they are all abusing women mm -hmm. to get a lot of power and money and um, the thing is that for example German regime is in the name of uh, tolerating Islam making a very big advertising about hijab mm -hmm. to fight fascists and uh, racism. Okay, uh, no one likes racism and fascism and stuff, but there are women again abused for their goals. And also in Islamic regimes, we see what happens to women just uh, for them to get more power, financial power and stuff. And the, the other thing is that I think there is a very gigantic big um, religious power behind the stuff because if we start to criti uh, criticize um, hijab then we have to criticize also not and church and we know that western politics is a lot paid by church and gets a lot of money and power from religion and that's why uh, they also help actually for Islamic regimes to go on with the, with the Islam yes, and uh, that's uh, the, the best time to start saying something against it and I love it to tolerate everything but um, hijab is something which became uh, just politi a, a politic operation of the half of society of the world and this is way, uh, the way they can control people, they can make people fight each other, men and women, to make them weak, the families, and, and then they can control the world a lot. So. Fair point. The thing talking about politics, you know, you know we in, in like in Germany, for example, or in other European countries, the, the policy like being followed by the most of the politicians say like, you see these people coming from LA. This is their own culture. Hijab is their own choice. Like the left party here in Germany, the links, I would say, they always like somehow like protect and support hijab and Islamism in this country. How you see like you know how you see the role of politician in promoting Islamism? So I think, uh, first of all, who says to a baby who comes to the world, hijab would be good? Mm -hmm. So this is the, uh, this comes just from politicians not giving enough uh, information to people, not building the people. They build people about drugs, they build people about uh, being jobless or something, but never about hijab or religion. And this shows the religious power, world power. And um, I think we need to build people and families about hijab. I know that so many people like to, to use it, yes of course, but the problem is I have never seen a mother wearing hijab not telling her little baby daughter this is good uh, to wear the hijab, otherwise it's dangerous, you're in danger, you're weak, you would be attacked and you could, would come to the hell and this is uh, really terrible what happens to our children in the future. We are today living uh, more like Stone Age than the old Persia or the old China. They were living uh, yeah. even more modern than us. In the old Persia we had Artemis who was uh, uh, the Navy Minister of Kurosh. 
So that time, and for today, if we have the uh, army minister of any country as a woman, then it would be scandalous and then yeah. they would talk about it, oh, feminist, but we just went back instead of going yeah, yeah. to front. Let's talk about yourself a bit. Like, I know, like, you're an artist, you, like, you, know, you paint something, and, like, you, like, don't, like, not protest, like, many times. Why do you think, like, no, the not protest is important? Why are you doing this? Like, what, how, you, how you describe the role of, like, fighting women for the rights, the not process, and that process, you think? So the thing is that, um, just to be very honest, I was a girl and I was very alive and I was saying what I think and I was attacked at home by my family too strong. So they purposely did not let me go to university so I do not get even more power and stuff. So they can make me marry somebody before I just freak out and do whatever I want because I. I was white since I was a very little girl and uh, so they did not give me any possibility to do anything out of my future and I came to Germany and Germany did not, until today, after 20 years being naked activist against Islam in Germany, I do not yet have a passport or something and anything so I can just say. Germany did not give me the possibility to build my future, to go to university and anything. And uh, so I had to build my future out of my own hands with the art which I could. And uh, so, of course, I did that to the theme I work on. I did not have a lot of feelings to paint some, uh, some lines and points and dots here and there and to say, what could it mean, you know? I had a lot to say serious shit. <laughs> so that was the reason why I yeah. did it. And the people did not like uh, paintings anymore. They wanted more action. Mm -hmm. They wanted to see blood. Mm -hmm. And so I was bleeding. All the Middle East is bleeding. And, and the Western people find anything as art except it is naked. So we got naked, bleeding on the German streets and because I was a Muslim uh, born girl so it was very big for them and I could have a voice and I could say what's happening to us because um, Western people here, European people think mostly that we are uh, riding camels in Iran and we are like, you know, and yeah. I just wanted to have a voice for people of my country to say we have fucking artists yeah. and we understand, we are modern, we are with the world, we are not some Taliban people and stuff. Fantastic. And I had a lot Fantastic. to say. Fantastic, you're awesome. I really, really like, you know, be fascinated. One last question. We know that there's like a big movement of atheism. There's like so many strong women in like Iran, Saudi Arabia, like these sort of countries, Middle East and obviously like Islamic stricken countries. We have like this protest in Iraq, we have this like a movement, anti-hijab movement in Iran. What's your message to the strong, brave women fighting for the rights in Middle East? So I just can say to women, do it, do it and don't let them get you. Do it short and run away and save your life. It's not strong to let yourself uh, be, um, be um, catched by them and you go to the jail and you're hanged. This is not strong to play with your life. Strong is that many women do it and run away and they can be free and they can be happy. The strong thing is to do it happily and smile about it and not scream about it and not suffer about it. They want you to suffer so they catch you and they make you suffer to show the others, to take the power from the others away so that the others don't do it. The, the power about this point is that you do it and you run away very happily, leave the rest and the others do it. The power about it is not that I do it alone or Two, two, three other women do it alone. The power about that is that millions of us do it. That's it. Thank you. So, Ms. Vakil Fourth, artist and women's rights activist, thank you very much for talking to us. Thank you. Thank you very much.